Starting a YouTube automation channel where a faceless YouTube channel is the best way to make money online in 2024. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly step by step what are the methods on how you can do that as well. Now, I've personally been involved in this business model over the last three and a half years. I started dozens of channels, made hundreds of thousands of dollars, and some of them got me a couple YouTube blacks as well. I've almost seen everything and I definitely know the ins and outs of this industry. So I highly recommend you watch this video until the end as I plan on sharing everything that I learned with you and don't worry. I won't sell you anything at the end of this video. There are three main steps that you need to do when starting a YouTube automation channel and they are as follows. Choosing the niche, hiring the team and finding video ideas. And with that out of the way, let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is choosing the niche. And there are a few key factors that I want you to keep in mind when choosing your niche to make sure that you choose the best and most profitable niche for yourself from the beginning. Now to make things clear, finding a profitable niche for a YouTube automation channel and a faceless YouTube channel is nothing but a numbers game. The more you research and the more potential niches you scan through, the more winners you will find. And the best part is because the business model is so new, not a lot of people know about it. And it's still very early for this opportunity, there are so many untapped niches that have a lot of potential and that can make you a lot of money out there. So there are three key factors that I look at when choosing a niche for my own YouTube automation channels, and they are as it follows. The first one is original content. With original content, you want to make sure that the way the videos are created in the niche that you're looking to start with are adding enough value and they're not just created off of reusing somebody else's content. Bad examples of this would be compilation videos, rain sound videos, fireplace video, meditation videos, maybe even motivation videos because most of those videos are created just by taking somebody else's work repurposing it a little bit and uploading it into YouTube. And most likely, if you start a channel in one of those niches without creating all the actual content yourself, which doesn't make sense in my opinion, you will most likely not be able to make money. Good examples, on the other hand, are pretty much all the channels that have a script and a voiceover, a narration attached to them. Whether that be a listicle video about football players or a news video covering the latest celebrity drama, you want to make sure you are creating original content. The second key factor I always want to take before choosing my YouTube automation niche is earning potential. And here's how we do this. First, you want to make sure there's already an audience, there's already demand for the type of videos that you want to create. And the easiest way to do that is to find competitors, meaning people who are already doing something very similar to what it is that you're trying to do when it comes to creating the videos. If I was a beginner, for example, I wouldn't go in a niche where there are no competitors because pretty much there are only two case scenarios. Number one, I either found the diamond, an untapped gem that nobody ever thought about and I'm going to make a lot of money. Or number two, the niche that I'm looking at is just a bad idea, hence nobody's really doing it. The chances of it being option two and it actually not being a good niche are much higher and that's not a bet that I want to make. So I always want to make sure I want to find new and successful competitors that are going into the niche before I go and explore. I don't want to be the guinea pig. And secondly, you want to make sure that the competitors that you found are actually successful and are making the amounts of money that you want to make. The way you figure out how much money your competitors are making is by using this formula. You want to take their number of monthly views, which you can easily see by installing the vidIQ free extension, going to a channel's homepage and pressing this button, divide the number of monthly views by 1000, as YouTube is paying creator for every 1000 views their channel generates, and multiply the result with the average RPM. The RPM being how much creators get paid for every 1000 views. Now, you can never know 100% what a channel RPM is unless you see behind the scenes and you see their YouTube studio, but I put 10 examples on the screen right now from niches that I've seen time and time again so you can make a broad idea. Now, the third key factor I always consider when choosing my niche is timing, and this one is very, very important. You can do everything else right, but if you overlook this factor, you might be setting yourself up for failure. So now that you know that there are competitors in the niche that you want to pursue and are also successful and are actually making money, the last thing I would consider if it's still relevant, if it's still a niche that you can go in and have success in today's day and age. You simply do this by making sure that some of the competitors that you're seeing, some of the competitors that you have in the niche are actually new channels that have entered the space in the last three, four, maybe six months, and they're getting decent views and decent traction, which means they will be making money. For example, let's say I wanted to go in the book summaries niche. The most popular videos and the most successful channels have been around for one, two, three, maybe even more years. And the more recent channels that I can see coming to the space, well, they're kind of struggling. So by looking at this, I'm not really attracted to start a book summary channel because everybody who came into the space in the last six months is failing. So why would I want to be the next? On the other hand, let's take a look at the AI niche, for example. I could easily find a couple competitors that have been in the space for less than a year and are already getting a decent amount of views enough for them 
to make three to five thousand dollars per month with their channel. Even looking at their most popular videos, we can see that they've been posted one month ago, two months ago, five months ago, which shows me that there is still current interest into this niche and there are still new people coming in, taking a piece of the pie. So I would want to be the next one. That's it about the niche in big line, guys. Make sure that you follow the three key factors and you always do your research. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's just a number game. And with all the criteria I've just shown you, you should be good to go. You just need to put in the work, do the research and find a niche that fits you best. And with that being said, now we're going to need someone to do the video for us, aka hiring the team, which is the step two of this video. Before we go straight into hiring, I want to remind you that there are three ways of running faceless YouTube channels. Number one, we have the free method. You can start with zero dollars, create all the content yourself, and you don't need to show your face. Number two, we have the paid method, where you outsource all the work to other people who create a content for you. And number three, we have the hybrid method, which is a combination between the first one and the second one, meaning you will do some of the work yourself and you can outsource the other parts of the video that you, for example, don't wanna do. So in this video, I'll walk you through the exact hiring process that I use to get people to create a content for me for my own YouTube automation channels. But if you wanna do everything yourself, or maybe you don't have the budget for hiring, I highly recommend you watch this video where I go a little bit more in depth into how you can do everything yourself. So, if you follow the classic route, which is what I recommend, you're going to need a scriptwriter, a voiceover actor or a narrator, a video editor, and a thumbnail designer. And don't worry, this won't cost you as much as you think. You can get the entire video done for as low as $40 to $50 per. There are two main platforms I always use in my hiring process, and they are Fiverr and Upwork.com. The best part is that both of them are free. And the way to go about this, it's pretty simple. On Fiverr, as soon as you've created your account, which will only take you a couple of minutes, you want to start searching for your role. Now, I want to mention that in most cases, I only go to Fiverr to hire voiceover for my videos, and I do that by searching for voiceover voiceover actor in the search bar and applying the following filters. I want to do English for the language where you can select your desired one, select the gender if you have any preferences, and you can see that there are over 5,000 services available, which is too much for us to scan through. So we want to narrow down the search with these filters. Here under voiceover options, I usually go with the age range, which is going to be adult in most cases. I also want the service to include commercial rights as well, so I don't have to pay the freelancer extra for it. And then probably the ones that will do the most filtering, I look for new sellers that speak English in this case because I don't want people who are already working with 50 other clients. Delivery time up to three days and for the budget I usually put $50 so I can cover a wide range of sellers even though that's not the price that I'm going to pay in the end. I'm now down to about 600 services and why I like Fiverr so much is that it allows me to quickly listen to their voice without having to speak with them directly or ask for samples. Just press this play button right here, select the ones that you like and they'll think you'll fit your channel and then message them to start a collaboration. And once again, the more people you listen to and start a conversation with, the more people you will find that will fit your criteria and your budget. So it's just a numbers game at this point. Now on Upwork, on the other side, things are looking a little bit different. And to be honest, I like Upwork a little bit more than Fiverr. And the reason is I found freelancers to be of slightly higher quality on Upwork compared to Fiverr. And also because it's easier to talk with multiple of them at the same time. And the reason behind that is that as you've seen on Fiverr, we are the ones that need to go to freelancers. We are the ones that need to find them. We are the ones that need to initiate a conversation, do the negotiation and all that stuff. Whereas on Upwork, on the other side, we are going to be the ones who are going to be posting job postings. And it's the freelancers that are coming to us and showing interest by applying. And you can do all of that for free. Here's how. So once you create the account, you simply want to click here where it says post a job, then go for short term or part time. And for the title, I usually use role for niche YouTube channels. So for example, scriptwriter for cars YouTube channel. Here at skills, I just stick all the popular ones and choose the desired language. Scope will be medium, one to three months. And I'm looking for intermediate and say no, no for full time work. For the budget, I keep the recommended hourly rate and I don't really think about it because at this stage, I'm not interested in filtering the candidates by just getting as many as possible and I'll filter them manually at a later point. Now for the description, what you can do is go to ChatGPT and use this prompt. Write me upper job description looking for a scriptwriter for a car's YouTube channel and let's see what he comes up with. Okay, so this is actually pretty good. I would remove the how to apply section and that's already pretty straightforward and I would rewrite the top section to say that I'm just starting a channel rather than having it. And also my favorite thing to do is to include example channels. In the description, you can say something like, I'm looking to make videos similar to, and then you want to include three or four links of your favorite videos from your competitors. You'll also want to put custom screening questions and ask them the questions that are important to you and play around with the other settings as well if you want to narrow your pool of candidates. Once you do that, you're good to go. You can publish the job and you need to repeat this process to fill all the roles that you're looking for. You'll see applications start coming in within a couple of hours and it usually takes about two to three days until it reaches its peak. So it's a pretty fast process. Look, I've interviewed hundreds 
hundreds of freelancers, hire dozens of them. And I can definitely tell you that this is the most efficient process. And I'm sure you're going to be able to get decent results by using it. What you could also do once you know the freelancers that you're going to be working with is to put a proper management system in place. One where you have a cleared way of structured communication and the video files are transferred from one freelancer to another without you being involved. So you don't spend as much as time as possible, but you automate it. Now, unfortunately, that alone would probably be a 20 to 30 minute video. So we don't have time to do it in this one. But let me know in the comments down below if you want to see that and subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. Before we go forward and we move to the final step, let's do a little bit of recap. So first, you want to choose your niche. And I recommend really spending the time to find the most profitable and the best niche that fits your niche and lock it in because this is going to serve as the foundation of your channel. Then you want to focus on building the best team you can possibly build given the allocated resources and the time you have available because the team is 80% of the business. If you have a great team, you're going to have great videos. And if you have great videos, you're going to make a lot of money. And with those things dialed in, you'll be ready for step number three, which is the final step of this video, finding video ideas. Compared to choosing a niche, which if you do it right, you are only have to do it once. So it's a standalone process and hiring a team, which is also not so dynamic. Maybe you hire it once and then you keep swapping people in between, but finding video ideas is going to be an ongoing process. So something that you do over and over again. And to put it simple, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but also finding video ideas, it's a numbers game. The more research you do, the more ideas you will find. And the more ideas you will find, the more you will test. And by testing more, the more winners you are going to find, the more money you are going to make. I think you got the idea. And by the way, as I said at the beginning of this video, I've been doing this for over three and a half years, and I still find video ideas that I think will crush. But then when I post them, they completely flop. The key that I always look for when it comes to video ideas is that I'm trying to understand why did this particular idea work and why this one didn't so I can improve my picker for the long term. Now to manually find video ideas using YouTube, I once again recommend you install the VidIQ extension in TubeBuddy. I'm not affiliated with any of them, but they're going to give you a little bit more insights. What I usually do and is my best tactic for coming up with good video ideas is to look for outliers. I want to find smaller channels, usually below 50,000 subscribers, but I would go even smaller, meaning 40, 30,000 subscribers if you can, and you want to find the outlier videos from these channels, meaning which of these videos have gotten a disproportionate amount of views, which is way more than their average. For example, I found this video in the golf niche that has 166,000 views and the channel only has 15,000 subscribers. So that's a 10x outlier. And also this one in the cars niche with over 1.1 million views and the channel has less than 30,000 subscribers, which makes it be almost a 40x outlier. Those are the videos that I want to model and take inspiration from when it comes to finding good video ideas. And to make it a little bit easier, there's this website out there called One of 10, which can speed up the process a little bit. Once again, I'm not affiliated or sponsored by them, but I think the boys over there are doing a pretty decent job. All right, guys. So I hope I was able to share a couple valuable tips and tricks with you that you can use to start your own YouTube automation channel as a beginner. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe for more. And as I always say, don't get fancy, don't get cute. The work needs doing. Good luck to you.